Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm the Last Wanderer, and today we've snapshot 22w13a, which adds the LA and re-adds ancient cities while completely renovating them. These are some pretty big changes, so let's get into them. First, we have the LA. These guys currently cannot be found naturally in worlds, not because they don't generate, but rather, if you do happen to find where they generate, in either woodland mansions or pillager outposts, your game will freeze upon them attempting to generate. So, yeah, I don't recommend trying to find them in this snapshot. You can still spawn them in with a spawn egg, though. Once you are able to get a laze in survival, they're pretty easy to transport, which you'll have to do a lot since they only generate in pillager outposts and woodland mansions, and they don't respawn. So, once you've got an Olay, if you want to transport it, all you have to do is pop a lead on it, and since it's a flying mob, you can just fly off with your elytra. Whoops. As long as you go in a straight line, no matter how fast you go, the Olay will remain on the lead. Just don't make any sharp curves though, because that'll break it off. Let's now just go over the basics of how the Olay works. If you have an Olay, you can give it any item, and it'll attempt to pick up all nearby items of the same type, but only up to a stack. Once it's got that item, it'll attempt to return it to the player that gave it the item in the first place. Though alternatively, if you have a note block playing, the LA will instead try to give those items to the note block. Once this guy path finds, you'll throw them at the note block, though we intercept those items with a hopper, and the hopper picks it up instead. That's basically how the LA functions. Some other important things to know about the LA is that any time you can simply right click on the LA to get your item back and then you can give him back any other item. And you'll also sort unstackable items, though he doesn't differentiate based on MBT values. So if you give him a water bottle or any potion, he'll return any potion in return. Though not splash potions because those are technically different. And the same applies to enchantments. If you give him one enchanted book, he'll return any type of enchanted book. Just something to keep in mind. So, what are some potential uses for the Alay? Because in most cases, a hopper is faster, more reliable, and easier to obtain. Well, here's one use for the Alay. Pointed Dripstone Mob Farms. Before, Pointed Dripstone wasn't a viable option to be used in mob farms despite its benefits. Although Pointed Dripstone allows you to decrease the size of mob farms, because mobs no longer have to fall as far due to the property of pointed dripstones increasing fall damage and the fact that they would get rid of mobs faster because the mob didn't have to fall as far, there was always the obvious problem that you couldn't fit hoppers or hopper minecarts cleanly underneath them. The LA solves this problem because it can go on top of those pointed dripstones and collect all the mob drops. I'm demonstrating this concept for the creeper farm because it's pretty easy to show, as you only need a single lay to pick up the gunpowder drops. Now, the main benefit of this new design is that the spawning platform, the lowest one that is, is half the distance to the kill platform than it was before, thanks to the pointed dripstone and the lay. This will also work in many other types of farms, such as a general hostile mob farm, though you'll need more lays to carry items such as bones, rotten flesh, string, and the various witch drops. Obviously, this new kill platform is a lot better than the old one, since now you can put your mob farms slightly lower down in the world before, which will increase your hourly drops. Another use for the LA is sorting unstackable items, which was previously pretty difficult to do. Here's an example of this with an auto bartering farm that I'm working on, because Higlins produce a bunch of items, including unstackables like enchanted books, fire resistance potions, splash potions, and enchanted iron boots. Before, this was pretty hard to sort, but now I can slap in some allays and get them to kind of sort the items. They're a little bit glitchy right now, which I'll explain as the piglins barter with this gold and produce unstackable items. To get the Alays to throw their items at these note blocks here, I have to unpower this redstone line, and 
then turn the new blocks off because they make an annoying sound. So these items will start filtering through and we start getting unstackable items like those iron boots there. These legs here are put in a cauldron so they can't fly around and attached on a lead so that they remain the highest position possible in the cauldron which is just underneath the bells. They'll then attempt to throw their items at the note blocks but the bells stop them so they'll fall in these hoppers and get sorted out down here. The only problem currently though is that some of these allays, namely this guy right here, will attempt to pathfind to this note block, which it can't reach, so it'll never throw its items, which is a bit of a problem. Hopefully they fix that pathfinding issue later though. And once the piglins are done bartering, the only items left circling around are these enchanted books. The three allays here did their job. This one decided to pathfind to an unreachable note block and slack off. All these other items are perfectly sorted, but not the enchanted books. So hopefully that pathfinding issue is fixed. Now, let's get into a bad change for the snapshot that's kind of related to the LA. Note blocks can now no longer be made silent by putting any block on top of them. Now, you have to put wool or carpet on them in order to silence them, which is bad for redstone builds, because now you're faced with the choice of making the build larger and not listening to the note block, or making it as compact as possible, but putting up with the annoying noises of the note block. This is rather unfortunate. Here's one such example. If you have a line of note blocks here with redstone dust on top of it to update a row of observers, well, you'll be met with this noise now every time you activate it. Yet not really the most pleasant thing. Hopefully, this rather annoying change gets reverted. The other major new feature in the snapshot is Ancient Cities. They're back, and this time they're better than ever, with new side sections and better loot. Looking around, you can see just how much the architecture of Ancient Cities has improved. They also make use of some new blocks. But like I was mentioning before, their loot is also better. You can now find things like enchanted diamond leggings and an enchanted diamond hoe. In this chest here, there's an enchanted golden apple, amethyst shards, an enchanted book, and a potion of regeneration, which will be very useful when the warden one-shots you. Here's some more new stuff, another enchanted book, more enchanted diamond leggings, but if I keep looking around, ah, the music disc other side, which is pretty hard to find. It was pretty cool that it now spawns in ancient cities. There's also this room here with unique loot down here, which contains things like packed ice, baked potatoes, golden carrots, and will sometimes spawn with snowballs. So yeah, strangely enough, ancient cities have freezers. These freezers also have some interesting redstone choices, like these note blocks that play a bell sound because there's packed ice underneath them, and this iron trap door with a pressure plate that's not needed since the iron trap door is always powered by this lever. Pretty strange. Oh, but the redstone strangeness doesn't end there. If I open this chest here, there's always a single golden carrot inside which you might think is a strange choice. But if I stand right here and I eat it, you'll hear some pistons firing, which opens a secret redstone bunker underneath the center of the city. Inside this redstone basement or bunker or whatever you want to call it, we'll find a bunch of redstone contraptions that appear to be in-game tutorials on the various redstone components. Like this room here seems to be for comparators, showing how comparators can subtract signals, and how a comparator decay clock works, which is hooked up to this door over here, which we opened earlier. This room shows how the target block works. If you shoot it, it'll power this redstone block. This lectern here demonstrates how if you put a written book on it, it'll give out a signal. Over here, we have something showcasing how repeaters can power solid blocks 
but not transparent ones. And then back here we have two empty rooms. I guess they kind of ran out of ideas. So yeah, this redstone is pretty janky, but I guess it would be a good introduction for new players. Though I don't know if many new players would want to risk death by the warden to learn redstone. Especially considering some of these redstone contraptions might accidentally summon it. And those are all the major features of the snapshot. Two last features I want to touch on are the fact that reinforced deep slate can no longer be moved by pistons, and the deep dark is more common now, generating in more places, though I'm not entirely sure yet how that works. But that's all I've got for now, so thank you all so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank you once again all for watching, and goodbye. That's an interesting way of holding a trident, little guy.